all the time, every day, every situation, not just on Sunday mornings. Am I a believer or am I an unbeliever? As believers, we have a birthright. Do you know that the promises of the Bible are all for us? As believers, that is the birthright that we have. That's what's been given us. This whole entire word is for our life and godliness. It, is, it holds the promises for everything that we need right in here. We have a birthright. When we get saved, we become a part of God's kingdom. We actually get to be joint heirs with Jesus. We've been adopted into the kingdom of God. So all the things that Jesus had as he walked and talked on this earth are our rights and our privileges and our blessing. We have a birthright and we are joint heirs. Let's look at this in Ephesians 3, 6. That the Gentiles, that would be us, Jews, Gentiles, should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promises in Christ through the gospel. So we should be partakers of the promises of Christ. We should be joint heirs with Jesus. That is the promise that is for us. And again in Galatians 3.26. For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And it, this is captioned, sons and heirs. We are joint heirs of Jesus. Just as Jesus is the son of God, you are sons and daughters of God in his kingdom. We need to live like sons and daughters of the most high God. We need to be believers. You know, you can come and sit in these seats every single week for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and you can still just have that sign around your neck that says Christian. You can still just be a part of the crowd because he's here. He's here. What do you need? What do you need? He's here. Are you willing to grab a hold of it? This is where our chicken noodle soup comes in. On the back of these, I put a little sticker for you. Believer or unbeliever? Oh, I don't want to read the verse yet. I'll wait. Okay. So we're talking Jacob and Esau. We're going to turn to Genesis 25, 29. Genesis 25, 29 through 33. Jacob cooked a stew, and his brother, twin brother, Esau, but Esau was the oldest of the twin. Esau had the birthright. He, had the, he was the oldest, so he was going to be given the inheritance of all of the land and all of the possessions. Now, Isaac was their father, who, if you back it up, was the son of Abraham. So there's a whole lot of stuff involved here, a whole lot of inheritance involved, and it was all for Esau. He had the birthright to that because he was the firstborn of the twins. Now, Jacob cooked a stew. And Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. He was hungry and tired. And Esau said to Jacob, please feed me with that same red stew, for I am weary. Therefore, his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, sell me your birthright as of this day. Now, don't hate Jacob. Don't hate Jacob. Jacob wanted the inheritance. He wanted everything that was put in front of his brother. He wanted those blessings for himself. So Jacob said, sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, look, I'm about to die. So what's this birthright to me anyways? And then Jacob said, swear to me this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils, and then he ate, drank, and arose and went his way. 
So he sold out all of that stuff. I mean, think about it. This is Abraham's inheritance being passed down to him. He sold all of that because he was tired and he was hungry and he wanted a bowl of soup. You know, we look at that like, wow, how could he sell all that for a bowl of soup? But do we? What do we sell out our birthright for? I don't know. When I sat down and thought about it, I think we might have sold out for less than a bowl of soup. Let's talk about some, some of the ways that we've sold out from our birthright. We sell out for the Church of Serta. Sounds like a, a, a church in the Bible, doesn't it? It's actually that mattress, Serta mattress, that you get your extra hours of sleep in it. So we sell out for a couple of extra winks of sleep. At least Esau had been out working really hard and was actually starving and hungry. We just want another hour of sleep on Sunday morning. We got seven, maybe eight hours of sleep, but we just want that extra couple hours. Ooh, that's less than a bowl of soup. Sometimes we sell out teens and adults, they're not the only ones, just to fit in. Just to fit in with the crowd. We're not tired. We're not weary. We just want to fit in. We want people to like us. You know, those same people, 10 years from now, you won't even know them. You won't even give a care what they think about you. They'll be going their own way, their own direction. Sometimes, don't we sell out just to take the easy road? Just to take the easy road. Oh, that one looks really easy. I'm going to go that way. Sometimes we sell out for our need to be right. We can lo completely lose our salvation over our need to be right. Oh, here's a good one. Because we have an offense. I got to pick on somebody who knows that I don't really mean it. <laughs> I'll pick on Adrian. <laughs> you know that, Adrian? I just can't stand what she does. She's so disrespectful. I just, I can't, I can't sit behind her in church and worship. Are you kidding? Oh, you missed out. Is it hurting her any? No, but you're missing out. I can't go in that building because she's there. I do love you. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> but seriously, come on. We have those thoughts. Sometimes we sell out because we don't want to stand out. We just want to slip into the crowd. We don't want anybody to notice us. Sometimes we sell out for more money. Sometimes we sell out for a job. You know, are we believers? Or are we unbelievers? What are we? And what will we sell our birthright for? It should be the most valuable thing in our lives. You know, the problem that happened with Esau is he allowed himself to get weary, worn down to a place where it was then easy to compromise. Because he was just, he said, I'm going to die anyway, so I might as well. Beware, it is a danger in the kingdom of God of becoming so weary and so tired with the things of this world that we have no fight left for the things that are spiritual. And what are the things that are going to last? Only the things that are spiritual are even going to last. But we exhaust ourselves on the things. Maybe you're exhausted because you stayed out partying too late last night. And you didn't get in till 3 a.m. So you're too tired now to come to the house of God. 
You're too tired to fight for spiritual things.